Hello homeowners, Brian Schweitke here, realtor and creator of the Stair Go Homeowner System. And today what I wanna do is get you ready to list your home. So what's probably happened either uh, we've already signed a listing agreement or maybe you watched a video about the listing agreement. And so what I'm gonna do today is talk to you about what happens between uh, we're, when we're done with the paperwork, signing the listing agreement, all the way until the close of escrow. Everything that's going to happen in there. So. My mission is to make this as least, least stressful as I can for you. Um, it should actually be kind of fun. So uh, we're gonna do it your way. We're not going to do it the old way. If that's not how you wanna do it, that might not be the best way to do it, okay? I wanna keep you safe. I wanna keep you secure. I want you to know what's going on step by step okay i'm going to explain everything set your expectations i don't want there to be any surprises down the road now we would normally get together and talk about this in person and the only reason i'm creating this video is maybe i might forget something in person or maybe you're out of town or maybe you just want to watch it again or maybe you're just getting ready to meet with me to save some time during our meeting so it's a good video to watch so um What's going to happen after the listing agreement is signed, um, I'm probably just going to leave that day. We don't have to you know, spend a huge amount of time after signing the listing agreement. I'll go away. I'll uh, get the initial paperwork submitted to the transaction coordinator. There are is a team of people that are going to be taking care of all of the paperwork that goes along with the transaction. There's lots of signatures, lots of different documents, and there is a team behind the scenes transaction coordinators that are going to make all that happen. So I'm going to give them the paperwork. The list price at this point really doesn't matter. It's just a place marker until we get ready to, right before we're going to list the home on the market. Then we'll do some more research and find out how we're really going to go out. Another thing that's going to happen is escrow is going to be open at the title company. The title company is a neutral third party. They don't really work for us. They don't really work for the buyer. It's just a, someone in between the seller and the buyer. And what they're gonna do is they're going to order a what's called a preliminary title report. The preliminary title report talks about everything from easements and encroachments and how you're holding title and the names on title and, and what loans are out, what back taxes might need to be paid. Um, just tells you everything about the property itself, preliminary title report. And you will also be ordering a natural hazards disclosure statement, which is called an NHDS. And so that report will talk about, you know, maybe there's a, um, an underground spring, maybe there's uh, you know a red toad tree frog endangered species in the area. Uh, maybe you're in a flood zone, a fire zone, a seismic zone. Maybe you have a historical landmark. Maybe there's just things that the buyers are going to need to know. And the natural hazard disclosure statement is something that is a requirement for the seller to submit to the buyer. And that will be ordered on your behalf. I'll order that for you. It's about $100. It'll be paid after uh, the close of escrow. And then what I'll do is I'll review those documents when they come back for accuracy. I'll see if there's any red flags or anything, and then I'll show those documents to you and we'll make sure that everything is correct in there. In the meantime, you might wanna make a couple of sets of extra keys for the lockbox. I'll need a set and then I've got two lockboxes. And then we'll schedule that listing preparation meeting, which is what this video really is about. So. On the website, stayorgohomeowner.com forward slash real estate, there's a tab on stayorgohomeowner.com called real estate. All these videos are there and lots of other information is there for you to use and download, okay? Okay, so this listing preparation meeting, this is what we're gonna be talking about today. So um, I'm gonna come back after we've submitted the listing and we've ordered those reports and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna have some additional paperwork this is just the beginning, believe me. Um, there may be some clarifications we might need to make. I'm gonna go and tour your house and I'm going to advise you on maybe some downsizing tips, maybe some home preparation tips. We'll decide together what we think we should do and what we don't really need to do. And then we'll talk about inspections and disclosures during that meeting or in, in this video. We'll also talk about uh, the entire marketing and sales process from womb to tomb, step by step, from start to finish. We'll put together a transaction coordination calendar together during the meeting and we'll spell everything out when everything's gonna happen. That's a preliminary, okay? Because it's gonna change over time depending on what we find and what we decide to do. 
And then um, we'll talk about ways that you can help and uh, you can also start thinking about all of the, the features and benefits and things that you love about your home. And we're gonna take that, that information and we're gonna put it onto the flyer, but start thinking about, try, get a list of things, you know, like the kinds of appliances and, you know, maybe when you did some upgrades and tell us about your home, what, what help makes you fall in love with it so that we can then market those in, that uh, verbiage to the buyers. So then um, we're going to also in the end talk about how we're gonna handle offers, select the best one and whatnot. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's get started with the touring of the home. The touring of the home, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around, we're both gonna walk around. Okay. So the best return on investment projects. Like I said before, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just helping you along and advising you on what the best return on investment low cost things are that get the biggest bang for your buck, okay? So interior paint, maybe some touch up, um, maybe some wallpaper removal. I know you love your wallpaper, you've had it for years, it was expensive, it's fancy, but if it's damaged at all, we might wanna try and repair it. If it's a little dated or a little dark, then we might wanna have it removed. Uh, we have to be careful with that because of textures behind the wallpaper and whatnot. It's a little bit time consuming, a little bit messy and a little bit costly. So we'll play it you know, by ear and we'll decide if we're gonna do that or not. Never telling you what to do, just advising you. May want to also wash down the outside of the house or have the painter power wash the outside of the house and then maybe do some touch up paint or some trim. They might just want to paint your trim a different color, uh, maybe white or something to make it pop a little bit. And if you do have any of that old paint lying around, let's gather that up in the garage and put it there so that the painter can then see it and try and match those colors. In addition to painting, then we're going to be talking about landscaping, pruning, and pulling up the canvas maybe of some trees. We're wanting to see the front of the house. It's all about curb appeal. Um, so uh, we might want to think about removing maybe some junipers or some ivy so we can see the front of the house. It's very inexpensive. It goes a long way, but if you're in love with your junipers or your ivy, we can leave it, uh, especially in a seller's market. So I'm just telling you what's really going to it's really gonna get them to stop. And really what we're thinking about is pictures here. We want the pictures on the internet to look fantastic, okay? So um, then we're gonna have an industrial strength house cleaning and window washing. And you might not wanna have your current house cleaner do this because they've seen it week after week after week, uh, or you even. And we want a fresh crew coming in and they're gonna clean that place. They're gonna be there all day, three or four people. It's probably gonna cost maybe three to five hundred dollars depending on you know how long it's been since you've had that industrial strength cleaning uh, so think about that and then on the flooring flooring is important too is that we're either going to clean the carpets that you already have or we're going maybe to replace some of the carpet that you have with just some dollar a square foot realtor carpet it's pretty cheap it goes in in a day and we might want to also think about really displaying the hardwood floors that you have underneath that carpet and it's not all that expensive to refinish those floors. Uh, it's just kind of disruptive if you're living there because of the fumes and the sanding and whatnot. But if it's a vacant house, we might want to do that. And we might want to do a combination of the two, actually. Leave carpet in the bedroom and just maybe uh, uh, refinish the floors down the hall or something. So that's what we're going to talk about during the meeting. We're going to put a budget together. We'll figure this all out. And then there also might be some minor plumbing or electrical, just basic issues because the buyer's gonna wanna know that you took care of that house. So um, just thinking curb appeal the whole time and thinking not spending too much money on this, but just getting it to where they can fall in love with it, okay? All right, so like I said, you don't need to fix everything, okay? So we're gonna get inspections and we're gonna talk about inspections, but there are some things that might come up in those inspections that we might wanna fix. And like I said, you're not obligated to fix them, but we'll talk about which ones we think we might wanna do. We're also gonna decide, or you're gonna decide on a budget. How much are you gonna put into the marketing of your home? So you're gonna be paying for realtors. You're going to be uh, paying for, not remodeling, but sort of uh, preparing the home for the market. So do you have 2,000, 5,000, 10,000? I've done uh, projects for people where we've spent 30,000, $40,000 on something to get it ready to go on the market. Now here's my theory on that. 
If the house is in terrible condition or really doesn't show well, then the cost and the effort it takes to get that from not very good to good is a great return on investment. In fact, um, we just spent $40,000 taking a house that was completely not good and just getting it to good. It cost us $40,000 to get it there. With that $40,000, there was another house that sold just next door and it sold our house sold for $120,000 more than their house sold for. Theirs was original, kind of an old grandma house, you know, like nothing had been done to it. All we did was spend $40,000 and we got $120,000 more than that house. So now continuing on with my theory, once it's good, I don't want you to spend a whole lot of money to get it to be great, okay? Because uh, going from Corian counters to granite counters or marble or, you know, tile to granite, if it's in good condition and they can live in it and they don't have to do anything to it, they just want to do something to it, let them do that portion of it because you'll never pick the right color granite or the right color tile or the right materials. So let's just get it to good, okay? All right, and like I said, it's best if it's vacant, especially if we're gonna be painting and doing things like that. Um, so we're gonna select which repairs give us the biggest return on investment. I'll be there to oversee all the workers, the payment, the schedule, the quality of the people. Um, I have a team of people. You can go on the stayorgohomeowner.com website and there's a tab called resources. That's everybody I work with. So you can go there at any time if you want to do some work prior to uh, me getting there. But those are the people I'm going to be using. Okay, so now we've got the home to a certain level where we can have our inspections ordered. So the inspectors are going to come in and why do we need inspections and disclosures? The reason we do that is because we want to sell our home as is. And the only way to sell a home as is is to tell the buyers what as is actually is. And you kind of know what as is is, and it kind of shows this is what as is is, but it's probably been quite a while since you've been under your house, in the attic, plugged something in, everything in. So these people are neutral, third-party, independent uh, inspectors that are gonna come out and they're going to do a home inspection, a pest inspection, a roof inspection at the least. That way they can give you reports. You can then review those reports, decide if you want to fix anything in the reports, you're not obligated to, but then you hand those reports over to the buyer and you say to the buyer, this is as is. This is what as is actually is. There's warts and blemishes and there might be termites, there might be a bad roof, uh, might need to be tinted, all sorts of different things. I'm not saying you have to do any of that, but giving that up and then also you telling them what you know about the house, that's selling it as is because every contract, California Association of Realtors purchase agreement is always as is. Well, it says as is until there's a new finding. And what we're trying to do is not leave anything to chance. We don't want to get sideswiped with, uh, you know, the buyers got their own inspections and they found something that we didn't. Our inspectors are going to find everything and if they find one little thing, yes, that one little thing is negotiable, but I doubt if they're gonna find a whole lot more than what we already found. So yes, it is a little bit expensive, you know, to pay for the home inspection, the pest inspection, the roof inspection, you could be spending, you know, about $1,000 to do that. So you can bill it to escrow, you don't have to pay it now, but it's $1,000, so worth it to be able to put your cards on the table, full disclosure, eliminate any surprises and renegotiating and all of that, okay? All right, so, also keep in mind that it's seller beware. It used to be, you know, buyer beware, and it still is buyer beware. Um, that's telling the buyer, hey, be careful. Make sure you look at everything and check everything out. Seller, seller beware is you better make sure you're disclosing everything. In fact, over disclosing anything. So think, start thinking about all the things you're gonna be needing to disclose. All right, so now let's talk uh, a little bit in depth about uh, the home inspection, pest inspection, roof inspection, and then some other inspections. So the home inspection itself takes a couple of hours. They're gonna need access to that attic uh, access door in the roof somewhere in your house and the crawl space that's probably in some back bedroom somewhere under, you have to pull everything out of that closet so that he can go under there and then uh, around the outside of the house as well. It's a full disclosure to the buyer. This is great that we're doing this. Uh, the reason we're doing it also is to make some repairs before we go on the market and you can bill it to escrow. 
and they're gonna check everything in that home. And I love the home inspection first because the home inspector can go and do his thing and he can say, hey, you really need a pest inspection. Hey, you really need a roof inspection. In fact, I think you need a septic inspection and a chimney inspection and whatever. So the home inspection is the most valuable thing. Second most valuable thing is the pest inspections because they're gonna be looking for active infestations of termites, both subterranean drywood termite and also dry rot uh, where water has continued to um, penetrate or go through wood. Like in the eaves underneath your home where maybe it wasn't painted or something <clears throat> or maybe there was a leak in the bathroom or something and it hit some wood and the wood started to get the dry rot. So they're gonna need the same access as the home inspector. And they I usually schedule them on the same day so they can go in, up, and under the house at the same time together and then they can compare notes. So again, full disclosure to the buyers, we can make repairs, we can bill it to escrow. And there's a difference now between section one items in the pest inspection report and section two items. Section one items means an active infestation, meaning the house is being eaten, <laughs> you know, or there's active uh, dry rot that needs to be repaired. Now, like I said, you don't need to do any of that, but if we're doing some painting and some of the wood is either rotted or has termites and we need to paint that, that wood, then we might uh, decide to make some of those repairs before the painting happens and that is also billed to escrow but that is an active infestation. Now section two items those are not active infestation but means that keep an eye on it. Uh, something may happen down the road it doesn't need to be fixed now but keep an eye on it. Okay next is the roof inspection this is the easiest one there is i don't have to be there you don't have to be there it's only 15 minute job all they need is access to around the perimeter of the house if you have uh, locks on your gates you're going to want to leave those open for the guy to come he's just going to give a time window you know i'll be there sometime uh, in the afternoon and uh, then he'll go up on the roof now if you have very sensitive tiles like terracotta or uh, even metal can be bent or um, if, if there's something that you don't want that guy up there, you gotta let me know that so that I can let them know that so that they're not walking around on a roof that you don't want them to be walking around on or if you think it's dangerous or something. They can just peek up and they'll take some pictures and they'll put it in the report. And again, that's billed to escrow. So some of the other inspection reports we could get, chimney, foundation, uh, septic, lead, um, asbestos. There's lots of different inspection reports. We'd, we're not going to order those right off the bat unless the home inspector tells us he thinks or he advises us to get some further inspections. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now that the inspectors are gonna tell um, the buyers what they know about the house, now it's time for you to tell the buyers everything that you know about the house. And the way we do that is through the seller's disclosures. Now there's a video called Seller's Disclosures on the website, stayorgohomeowner.com under the real estate tab. And you can then, uh, it'll teach you and educate you on how to fill out your disclosures, all of them. It's a pretty good size video, but it goes through the transfer disclosure statement, the seller's property questionnaire. Those are the two main ones where you're saying, here's what we've done to the house. You know, when I turn the toaster and the microwave on at the same time, it blows a fuse. We get the main line snaked once a year. We have a pest control company come out every six months. Uh, there's neighborhood nuisances or whatever it is. The transfer disclosure statement and the seller property questionnaire are both used for you to tell them everything that you know about the house. Then there's, remember that natural hazards disclosure statement, that's a disclosure. There's also a clue report, which is uh, how many home insurance claims you've had to your insurance policy uh, in the past three to five years. Maybe a fence blew down in the wind or something like that where you've had a claim. Um, then there's three things every seller needs to do to sell a home. So, well, four. Disclose everything you know. And then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to have your water heater double strapped. If it's only single strapped, it's not enough. If you haven't had it looked at in a while, let's get a plumber out there and let him do a double strap and bring that water heater up to code. 
So there's one thing you need to do. Another thing you need to do is you need to have a carbon monoxide detector on every floor. I like the plug-in kinds are the easiest. And so one on every floor, not right near the heating area, uh, but uh, one on each level. And then you'll need a, uh, what they call a 10 year uh, smoke detector, not the old kind of smoke detectors, but you need a 10 year, you don't replace the battery, you just replace the smoke detector in 10 years. You just write the date on there and then 10 years from now, they'll say, well, it's, it's gone and they'll just throw it out. But this is the new um, smoke detectors. You need one in every sleeping area and it's a, probably a good idea uh, on each floor, uh, not one right near the kitchen because it'll just go off all the time. Then there's a lead-based paint disclosure. We have to get the homeowners association uh, documents. If you live in an HOA, like uh, the villages or some condo or townhouse complex, you'll have to get with the HOA and it's your responsibility to purchase uh, and acquire this these HOA docs. I can do it for you, the title company can do it for you, my transaction coordinator can do it for you, but that's your responsibility to pay for those documents and then we will then disclose those to the buyers and that'll tell the health of the community uh, if there's any outstanding um, assessments or anything that's going on, the meeting minutes, the budget, how healthy is the place, and then the preliminary title report. Okay, so there's our disclosures. Now we've, we're, we've pretty much told everybody everything we know now, and we've done some repairs, and we've done some downsizing, and now really it's time to start getting ready to market the house. So staging is, I can't even tell you how important staging is. A lot of people think, I'm not gonna spend $2,000 for somebody to bring in a bunch of furniture. I already have furniture. Well, I know you do, but uh, in some cases, this is the best money you could even spend at all. There's two types of staging. There's editing where they can come in and they can move your stuff around and take things down that are maybe, I don't know, maybe offensive or maybe uh, distracting to a buyer as they're coming through your house. So if you have a lot of personal pictures or things, they're going to be looking at the pictures instead of looking at your house. Or if, uh, they're Buddhist and you're Christian or you're Christian and they're Buddhist and we've got crucifixes and Buddhas and things like that around, we're going to need to make the house a little more generic. Okay. So they're looking at the bones of the house, not your stuff. Okay. So that's editing is moving your own stuff around and making it look better, making it look more spacious, maybe removing some things and putting them in the garage. So the place looks a little bit larger. They'll supplement what you have. A full stage is <clears throat> when the house is vacant or you're not there, they'll bring in all of the furniture. I'll tell you, if a home needs a lot of upgrading, I would much rather stage it to go or coincide with the era that the house is currently modeled to. So if we've got Pepto-Bismol pink tiles and we've got avocado uh, and gold appliances, and which is fine, but I'd much rather stage the home to go along with that than spend money on replacing items and repairing things and upgrading things because staging makes the pictures look so good. It makes people fall in love with the house. So, you know, a couple thousand dollars is well worth it. Staged homes sell faster. They sell for more money. Uh, it makes the home look attractive. People fall in love with it. And the most important thing, like I've said, is the pictures on the internet. So, you know, for that virtual tour, we've got to have some beautiful pictures. A lot of times you'll see on the internet where the realtor took their pictures themselves. No. We want that house to look palatial. We want it to look large, clean, and updated, and cute, and they want to, they want to go there. We want to get them there. So that's about taking good pictures. Taking good pictures is what does the picture look like? Instead of a blank square room with nothing in it, what about a cute bed and a nightstand and a dresser and a couple of pictures? Okay, so it goes a long way. And really you only have to pay for the staging for the first month. Homes aren't on the market a whole long time. And if they are, then we can take the staging out. We don't have to pay for another month of staging. The pictures are still there on the internet. Okay, super valuable staging. Then comes the photo shoot. Now we've got the home staged. It's ready to go. I'll schedule the photo shoot. I'll pay for the photos. Uh, it only takes about 20 minutes. They're really good. They really know what they're doing. Uh, you can be there or not. It's up to you. Or I can be there or I. they can go by themselves. They can use the lockbox if they want, uh, if that's what you want. 
want you to, before you leave, or right when I get there, before him, and if we don't do this, that's fine, he'll do it, but we wanna turn on all the lights, open up all the shutters, make that house look as bright as possible. We wanna make sure there's no pets there, um, and uh, you know, just get the house ready for the photographer to come in front of the house, back of the house, everywhere. If this is showtime, okay? So the photos will be available that night and I will send you a link so that you can click on the link and you can see the photos online. You're gonna be thoroughly impressed with these photos. Next is, now, remember I said at the beginning of this, we didn't really need a price. Well, we've just probably spent about two weeks and doing everything that I just told you we need to do. And now it's time to figure out what our price is gonna be. We're not gonna price it too high. We're not gonna price it too low. It's gonna be just right. It's gonna be affordable. It's gonna be a nice, good number that's an attractive number, like a million two forty nine or nine ninety nine. Um, so it's gonna be some attractive number and it's gonna be based on comparative information. So I'll do what's called a comparative market analysis. I did one of those uh, before we even met uh, when we were talking about how much your house was worth and how much we were going to list it at. But now we need to know two, three, four weeks later, who's out there? Who's our competition? What has sold in the past 90 days in the area? So we'll do a comparative market analysis and then we'll decide what price we're gonna go out at, okay? So this is the time we're gonna be doing that because we have all of our marketing materials together. The house is ready to go and now we gotta make the flyer out of the photos. So the flyer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those you know, beautiful pictures that we just took and I'm gonna take that input that you have, you know, you know, all the features and benefits and the things that you fell in love with on the house. I'm gonna take the verbiage that you wrote for me and I'm gonna insert that and I'm gonna add some marketing to it, you know, some marketing verbiage like uh, cozy kitchen and uh, uh, classic uh, decor and uh, we'll, uh, you know, um, make it sound amazing. And I don't usually put a price on the flyer. I want them to be calling me. I want them to interact with me. I want them to look online for the price. And if I give it away right there, they're gonna look at it and they're gonna say, I can't afford it. And then they're gonna throw it away. I need them to get in that house. I need them to see it online so that they can fall in love with it, not just by a flyer. So I don't put the price on the flyer. And before, I send the flyer to the printer. I'm gonna send you a copy of the flyer and then you can look it over because you know, it takes a village. I can't, I'm not gonna get everything right. There might be a punctuation error or a grammar or a, you know, some double word or something like that, but we need to do this together. We need to cooperate and we need to make that flyer something that you would fall in love with because it's your house. So once I get your approval, I send it to the printer. I'll probably get the flyer back the next day. And then I'll bring over, you know, the flyer stand. They'll have uh, my business cards there. Uh, the other agents that come will leave their business card there as well. Uh, I'll give you the flyers. You'll have them and you'll be responsible for, you know, keeping this full and then keeping the flyer box that's on the signpost filled. And I don't like to put too many flyers out there because a lot of kids are coming by and they're making paper airplanes and the flyers I make are a dollar a piece, they're nice. Um, so let's just put 10 of them in there at a time because also if you put a huge stack of flyers in there and you come back tomorrow and there's still a stack there, you don't know how many uh, have been taken. So there's no real pulse of to find out if people are actually taking the flyers. So 10 at a time is usually about the right amount. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind, if you could do that for me is keep the flyer box full, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, now it's time to talk about the lock boxes. Okay, so we have one lock box for uh, the realtors. This is a uh, very heavy box. It's made out of like steel and rubber. It's electronic, okay? Um, and it's, uh, we will not attach this to your home like they used to. Remember I said the old way is not the best way. So I'm not gonna put this on your door, attach it to your house. When you're in the house, this is in the house with you, okay? When you're not in the house, then you'll just put it on the porch. Just set it on the ground, no one's gonna steal it, it's too big and only a realtor can open it, okay? And um, so the reason I don't attach it is because what's gonna happen is realtors are gonna call and they're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna come over and bring my client, is it okay? Well, if they get your phone recorder, they're gonna say, you know, I'll be there in 10 minutes. 
um, with my client. Well, in the meantime, you might be in the shower and you didn't get the call. And then 10 minutes later, they ring your doorbell and you're still in the shower. And then this is attached to the front door and they take out the key out of the tray here and open the door and there's an embarrassing situation. I don't want that to happen for you. So they'll open this lock box with their phones and with their little uh, key fob but it will be in the house when you're in the house, okay? And outside the house when you're gone. Now, also, just to be completely safe, if you don't want the lockbox out of the house at all and you wanna do a, a by appointment only, that's fine as well. Remember, this is all about you. This is all about you feeling safe and secure and not stressed out, okay? All right, so uh, next is, oh, also one quick thing. We're gonna have another lock box as well. This is called a contractor's combo box. It's not fancy or anything. It's just a four digit code. And this will be like maybe on the hose bib outside your house. And I put an extra set of keys in here. I know the code. And what happens sometimes is the realtors will come and use this box. When they do use this box, it registers in here. It says Joe Schmo realtor was there. He came in at a certain time. He left at a certain time. And so there's a record of them coming to the home, which is great. But if they forget to put the keys back in the lockbox, or if somebody else, maybe the, uh, I don't know, the photographer, the house cleaner, or somebody that we decide needs this code to get in the house, then I always have an extra set of keys at the house, outside the house, in case of emergencies. Okay, so I have two lockboxes, that's why I need two sets of keys. All right, next is the sign post. I'll order the sign post. I'll pay for it. Um, we might or we might not have a coming soon rider out front. Sometimes I think people start to bother the seller when there's a coming soon sign, like they'll knock on the door and say, so it's coming soon, what's the price? And in some cases, we're getting the house ready to go on the market. I don't want them to see uh, the floors or the termite damage or any of the things that we're painting, things like that. So I kind of want to, I'm not too into coming soon, but if the house is in good condition and we want a little bit of extra marketing, yes, maybe we'll do a coming soon rider. So the signpost doesn't damage your lawn. It's just a piece of rebar that goes into the grass and then the sign kind of covers the rebar and then it stands up. And you don't have to be there for the sign to be installed. There's three kinds of signs. There's the old fashioned sign, classic. There's the double leg stand. And then there's the very fancy one for our uh, Intero Prestigio accounts um, where the house is worth, you know, multi-million dollars. I guess it looks a little more fancy. And then when, after we get it, are in contract, I'll replace the rider sign at the top and it'll say sale pending. And that just means we're waiting for it to close. Okay, so there's your signpost. And now it's time to do some real marketing. We know the price, we have the flyers, we've got the pictures, we've got the repairs done, we've got the staging done, we've got the home ready to go, we've got everything we need. Now it's time to get out there and put the home on the MLS, the multiple listing service. And in addition to just putting it on the market and having an open house, we're gonna go above and beyond the call of duty. This is where a realtor sets themselves apart from the crowd. This is where your commission dollars are going, not towards promoting my smiling face out there in the newspapers. We're trying to sell this home. The number one thing we're trying to do is get multiple offers. The way you get multiple offers is getting multiple people through the home. And the way you do that is through a lot of exposure. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to enter it onto the MLS. Then we're going to do email blasts thousands of emails out to local realtors, letting them know the house is on the market. Now, some people think that that's spam or how, how much could that do? Why would that be good? Well, the reason that's good is because when people are searching on the internet, serious buyers I'm talking about, they'll set up what's called an automatic search and they'll put requirements in there of something they're looking for in a house. Here's the area I want it to be in. Here's the price I want to pay. Here's the number of bedrooms I want. Here's the size of the lot. Here's the number of bathrooms. What they're trying to do is they don't want to look at every single house on the market. They're trying to input their criteria. While they're inputting the criteria, they're eliminating some houses that they might not see. Well, your house is one of the houses that they might not see if your requirement doesn't quite match what they're looking for. Let's say your house was 
1,499 square feet and they were looking for a house that was 1,500 square feet or more. Could they live with one square foot less? Of course they could, but they won't find it on the internet because the internet is so empirical. It's just a drop down menu, this or that, black and white. So what I need to do is I need to do massive marketing. I need to do marketing in all sorts of different medias and ways so that people hear about the house, not just on the internet. So we're gonna do email blasts to the realtors and they're gonna get an email in their inbox and they might say, oh, that, I, I'm so glad they sent this email. I never would have found that house because it doesn't quite match what my buyer's looking for, but now they got it. We're gonna do lots of uh, marketing all over the web uh, through our Relo networks where people are moving to this area and out of this area. Um, Intero does the, I can say this, uh, it is they pump it out on the web more than any other real estate company. Uh, they have that much pull, they spend that much money on their marketing. Um, we're gonna market locally, nationally, and globally. Um, so you're gonna be seen all over the world. This is good because there's a lot of people that are buying homes that come from other countries, they're buying them cash or whatever they are. So we need to be out there worldwide. We're also gonna do a social media blitz on Facebook and Instagram and Craigslist and all sorts of ways to get it out other than just putting it on the MLS and having an open house. Speaking of open houses, we might even have a neighbors only open house. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then we're also going to do what's called a broker's tour. So let me switch over to that slide. The broker's tour, it's optional. Optional meaning if you don't want realtors coming through your house on a certain day, it's usually Wednesday from like nine to noon. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. We're doing this your way. So you really shouldn't be there unless you want some really honest feedback. If you want some really honest feedback, then you can join me. I'll be there. I'll be listening to the realtors, um, getting sort of a sanity check on, you know, what do you think of the house? What do you think of the neighborhood? What do you think of the staging? Uh, what do you think of the reports? And, and most, uh, most importantly, what do you think of the price? Um, so, um, we're usually on the MLS by Monday night, so we're on tour by Wednesday. Like I said, I'll be there just as a sanity check. They're just gonna be coming and going. I usually have a coffee service and some donut holes and things like that. Just sort of a, it's a nice sort of a, we're not really kind of on the market yet. We just came on, give me your feedback kind of thing, okay? Once the broker's tour is over, that's a Wednesday, then realtors are gonna start showing up, showing the house, to their clients. And um, you can set the showing times on the MLS. Like when I put my notes on the MLS, there's the public notes of what everybody hears, the charming, gleaming swimming pool and upgraded this and great schools and whatnot. Then there's some private remarks down there. On the private remarks, we can put things like, uh, we're not gonna be reviewing offers until a certain day, or uh, take your shoes off, or you know, only show the house from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., something like that. Uh, so you can decide whether you want it to be shown to realtors by appointment only, where they call you and they say, I'll be there at two o'clock or three o'clock, or it could say, call first and then go, meaning, They'll call you, see if you're home. If you're home, they'll set a time. How's about two o'clock? How's that sound? Um, but if they don't get a hold of you, then you had left, you had put the lockbox on the porch, and they're, uh, they're uh, approved to go direct at that point after they call, okay? And they will call to check availability with you. You're in charge. I don't want you to get pushed around by pushy realtors saying, I can't be there until 7.30, which is your dinner time, or I, mean, I need to get there at eight o'clock in the morning when you just got up. You're in charge. It's a seller's market. I don't want you to be stressed. You're calling the shots, okay? Now, you can be there or you can not be there. Some realtors tell their clients, I want you to leave. Well, if your house is being shown every half hour and you're having to go to the store the library every half hour it gets a little i don't know it's kind of uh you know not fun to do you can be there just maybe go in the backyard and sit on the sit on the porch you can work on your computer whatever go in the garage do whatever you want to do um you uh want to make sure that anyone that comes to your house is accompanied by a realtor 
Okay. Somebody knocking on your door saying, Hey, I'm one of your neighbors. I saw the sign. I know somebody who wants to buy this place. Can I look at it? No, you can't come in my house. Um, this is a real security thing and realtors are licensed and insured and have a code of ethics and control the transaction on the buyer's side. That's why they're called the selling agent. You're paying not only the listing agent, but the selling agent. There needs to be an agent with that person coming to your door. Don't let anyone in your house unless they have an agent. Okay. Unless they take their shoes off too. <laughs> okay. Lights, the drapes, the shutters, you know, people are coming over. Hey, I'm going to be there at two o'clock, you know, five minutes before two o'clock, turn everything on, make that place sparkle and shine and get ready for them to come see your house. Okay. You're going to want to secure all your valuables, all your animals, uh, all your firearms, your jewelry, your cash, your medications. People are coming through your house things can happen. Uh, you're going to want to keep your house insured as well. And I want you to not say too much when they're there. Okay. And I know you know everything about the house and you love the house and you want to sell the house, but everything that they need to know is in the disclosures already or the flyer, or they can hear it from me or they can hear it from their realtor. So a lot of times when they're coming through your house, don't try and sell them on the house. We've got all the marketing that's going to do that and the disclosures that are going to do that. So leave that up to the realtors. Okay. Okay. So that's showing the property. The next thing is open houses. Now I want you to know open houses are optional. Okay. Um, some people say, well, let's talk, let's go back. The old school says, oh, you have to do an open house. That's just how it used to be done. Well, that's because there wasn't an internet way back then. So you'd have to put a sign out and invite people into your house so that they could see if they wanted it. Well, nowadays the internet's there. Buyers, serious buyers have agents. The agents bring the buyers to the house during the week or on a weekend or whatever it is. And I want you to feel safe. So if you don't feel safe, with a realtor putting a whole bunch of signs out on the street and inviting every single person in the neighborhood to come in your house to see what you have in your house, I'm okay with that. Normally open houses really are for your neighbors to see what remodeling you've done, <laughs> um, to, um, for me and the listing agent to maybe meet your neighbors or meet somebody to try and find a buyer who doesn't have an agent or something. Um, so really it's up to you. I think they're great. I'd be more than happy to do them, but I want you to know it's optional. Now there is a, an open house that I love, which is called a Friday night neighbors only open house. It's from about five 30 to seven. It's not really advertised, but there's signs in the area just for your neighbors as they're coming home on a Friday, whew, made it through the week. And here I comes the weekend and Hey, there's a sign out there. And uh, wow, why don't I go see this house that's in my neighborhood? We've also canvassed the neighborhood before that, sending out invitations for just your maybe hundred of your neighbors right around your house to come over on that Friday and talk with me. And the reason I want to do that is because I can weed out the neighbors and get all the information and the hubbub and the gossip and all that kind of stuff out at the stories. They're great out on Friday so that when on Saturday and Sunday and I'm doing an open house, I'm not having to talk to the neighbors while I should be really talking to buyers and their agents. Okay. So love the neighbors only on Friday open house. Again, optional to you. I'll be putting the signs out about an hour before the open house. There'll be a rider on top of the lawn sign saying what time the open house is. Um, you really shouldn't be there for the open houses. It really is not going to do any good. You're it just doesn't seem like a good idea for you to be there. It's a little intimidating. It's a little sneaky and uh, you may not want to hear all the comments. So again, put all your stuff away, secure everything, your valuables, make sure it's all clean. The beds are made, no forks in the sink, lights are on, shutters are open. And at the end, at the end of the day that night, I'll make sure to let you know how that open house went. Okay. All right. Next is talking about the actual calendar. So everything I've talked to you about, I calendarized and I wanted to go through this to show you what's happening when on a calendar. So 
For instance, the initial signing of the listing agreement, making the two sets of keys. The next day we get together for our listing prep meeting, what we're talking about now. We put a calendar together. We order the prelim in the NHD. And then we go on to the next thing, most important is you starting your downsizing, donating, selling, disposal, getting rid of stuff you don't want, maybe even having a garage sale on the weekend. I'll be scheduling all the subcontractors this first week to get quotes on things like for painting and landscaping and hauling. We'll schedule those inspections for next week because inspectors can't just come out right away. The next week after the garage sale, we're gonna haul everything away that you didn't sell that you don't want Landscaper is going to be coming in. Uh, we're going to be doing some basic house repairs. We're going to do some touch up on the paint, any sort of things, getting the home ready for the inspectors to come at the end of the week, right here on uh, Thursday, home roof and pest inspection. We got our house cleaning, window cleaning, lawn sign being installed, maybe with a coming soon rider. If you don't want the coming soon rider, we won't do the lawn sign yet. Do some staging. Now we've got the photo shoot scheduled for Monday. The lawn sign goes up because I don't want the lawn sign in the photo. The seller's disclosures, I'm gonna come back over and we're gonna finish all of our disclosures um, so that we can have a package to give away to the buyers when they ask. And we're gonna also create that flyer and send the flyer to print after you approve it. Flyers go in the box the next day. We're on the market in the morning. We've been on the market long enough to where we can add ourselves to the broker's tour. Then the realtors start coming and showing their house or your house to their clients. Here on Friday, we have the neighbors only open house. Saturday and Sunday, we have open house 1.30 to 4. We're on the market. So remember, people are coming by at all different times, making appointments with you to see the home. Now we have an offer due date on Wednesday. I don't want to take offers preemptively during the week as they come. I want them to say, hey, I want everybody to come in on the same day. That adds control and consistency to, and, and it reduces all of the craziness that happens if you just open the doors and say, we're taking offers as they come. It's the worst thing you can do. So you'll notice one week after we went on the market, we're reviewing offers. Some people think, well, I don't want to review offers that fast. Um, you know, that's just way too fast. I want to leave it on the market for a couple of weeks. Remember what I said? The buyers have an automatic search set up with the criteria of exactly the house they're looking for. These are the buyers that have been in the market for a while, been looking for a house for a while. When something comes on the market that matches their search criteria, they're notified within 15 minutes. They're on the phone with their realtor or out there at the open house, finally a house to buy, okay? Um, the other side of that, maybe a seller might say, well, it needs to sit on the market for a couple of weeks. The only people that haven't seen that house in the first day or a few days are people that are just getting into the market at that time. We're not looking for buyers that just got into the market that day because those buyers aren't going to make a real strong decision or act on anything uh, or even learn about what it's like to get overbid and outbid and all that kind of stuff for at least a couple of months. So serious buyers are who we're looking for. That's why we don't really need the open house. We don't really need a whole lot of the stuff. What we need is good marketing, good pricing. We need a sense of urgency. We need a certain day where we're gonna be accepting those offers and we want control and we wanna say the message we want to say to them to percolate the price up to as high as we can get it. Okay, so we're doing all of that. Offers are due on Wednesday. We're going to either accept or negotiate or counter offer, do all of that for the next couple of days. And then we're going to accept one of the offers. And the next day after we accept is day one. And then the buyers have their time period where they're going to be doing their due diligence so that they can remove their contingencies. And we're gonna talk about that. But as soon as the buyer gets into contract, the buyer's agent will send that contract to the buyer's lender because the buyer's lender had a pre-approval, but it wasn't based on anything. It was just kind of, here's how much I make, here's my W-2, and uh, here's what kind of job I have, and here's how long I've been there, and you know how much can I afford? And so they have this pre-approval letter. Well, once they have a contract in hand, hold the boat. The lender needs to get involved, the underwriter needs to get involved, the buyer's lender needs to order an appraisal to make sure 
that the buyer isn't buying a house that really is worth a million dollars for a million five. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about picking the best buyer at the end of this video. So um, an appraisal gets ordered and that happens for about a week and that's part of the buyer's due diligence. Once the buyer removes their contingencies, you can start packing and start getting ready to go. Uh, another week goes by, the seller, uh, along with me, the listing agent, will go to the title company and you'll need to bring your picture ID and we'll sign off all the final documents. That next weekend, you'll be vacating the property unless you have a rent back where you'll be staying in your property and hopefully at no charge for either 30 to 60 days. Then uh, right before the close of escrow, the buyer will do a final walkthrough and then we'll close escrow and the rent back will start or the funds will transfer. The seller's gonna sign off those final documents at the title company about a week prior to the close of escrow. You need your loan payoff information and possibly your trust. You'll know about this ahead of time. I'll be talking, we'll be talking, I'll be talking with the title person, the title escrow person will be contacting you. There's lots of communications that are going on. So don't worry about that, but something you will need to maybe think about is getting a copy of your trust if your home is held in the name of the trust, okay? Then the escrow officer is going to create what's called a seller's net sheet. And that will tell you, it'll break it down. Here's the sales price, here's the taxes you owe, here's uh, the county transfer tax, the city transfer tax, the tax about the tax, the fee about the fee, and then there's another fee, and then there's a notary fee, and all the different costs. And at the end, what you're gonna walk away with. So okay. I'll be meeting you at the title company so we can go over the net sheet in person. Um, now, keep in mind, you can use, if you're out of town or if you're out of the area or if you're incapacitated or whatever, the, a notary can come to your home or wherever and you can sign the documents there. You don't have to actually go to the title company. It's an extra like 100, 150 bucks, but a lot of people like that uh, convenience, okay? And you'll also need to tell the escrow officer where you want your funds transferred, uh, wired. You don't want a big check uh, or a suitcase full of cash. You wanna give them wiring instructions and then the funds transfer immediately. They're there the same day or maybe the next day. The whole sign off thing takes about 30 to 45 minutes. And then all we're waiting for is the escrow officer to give us a call saying that the property has recorded with the county. You're no longer the owner and you're off the hook and money should be in your account shortly, okay? So that's pretty much it. That's the whole entire process. Uh, what you can do to help, there's a couple of things. As a recap, get the crawl space ready and the attic ready for the inspectors to come. Get your warranties together, your home warranties and guarantees and leases and, you know, the dish network thing or the water softener or the, you know, any sort of uh, roof guarantee, you know, warranty for who knows how many years. Put that all in one spot, maybe a drawer in the kitchen or something. Uh, lock up all your valuables. Remember, want to be safe when people are coming through our homes and looking at it. We want to depersonalize stuff, take away the family photos and things. Uh, downsizing, reducing clutter, um, keeping your blinds open and the lights on while it's being shown. Um, make me a two sets of keys, that's important. Um, think about your pets and the showing times and uh, all of the great things you wanna be putting on the flyer. Uh, get the house clean and the windows washed and the yard work done. So lots to think about, but I'm here for you the whole time. Remember, the website, stayorgohomeowner.com, the real estate section, there's so, tons of stuff in there, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it. I, uh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna walk away with way more than you thought you were going to. And I wanna make this as easy as possible for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, requests, give me a call on my cell phone or send me an email or go on the website. Um, but um, we'll be talking probably daily throughout the next 30 days, okay? Thanks for listening and uh, congratulations and good luck. And here we go.